Hello everyone. Welcome to Neo IAS Daily Current Affairs. Today is January 30, 2019 and we are moving to today's Daily Current Affairs. The topics for today are Golden Langur, Institute of Eminence, National Statistical Commission, BLA NDM1. For the math session, we will be covering with the ports of Tartus and Latakia which is in Syria. And last we have PQRS. The first topic is about Golden Langur. So, Asa Minister of Environment and Forest, he announced the success of the Golden Langur Conservation Breeding Program in the state. The Golden Langur Conservation Project was undertaken by the Assam State Zoo in Guwahati during the 2011-12 fiscal year. And this program was funded by the Central Zoo Authority. Alright. The program is Conservation Breeding Program which was undertaken in Assam and it was funded by Central Zoo Authority. Talking about Golden Langur, it is known as the Old World Monkey. So, it is found in small regions of western Assam in India and the neighboring foothills of the mountains of Bhutan. Okay, so it is found in India and Bhutan and in India it is found in Assam. It is also called as geese golden langur and also golden leaf monkey. These are the other names for golden langur and of the known 15 species which are primates from India, 9 species are found in the state of Assam. Think out of 15 species which are primates which are in India, out of that 9 species are found in the state of Assam and Golden Langur is one of them. It is one of the primate species. Talking about this distribution range, I said it is found uh, in northeastern India that is in Assam, Assam and also in Bhutan. Alright and this uh, primate species is confined to a forest belt in western Assam between the Manas river in the east, Sankosh river in the west and Brahmaputra in the south along the Indo-Bhutan border. Alright, so it is confined to a narrow forest belt in the western Assam region. Talking about the particular threats for the species, they include habitat loss due to deforestation which is widespread in northeastern India and Electrocution from the power lines, hunting by dogs, then high juvenile mortality. All these are some of the major threats of this golden langur. And talking about the conservation status of golden langur, it is listed as endangered in the IUCN red list. Alright, golden langur is not critically endangered, it is only endangered. Please do remember and I think you can do, you can make a list of species like categorize them into critically endangered, endangered and vulnerable. So, even if the questions are asked for the prelims, you can easily eliminate if you know, like uh, some of the important species, if you know, you can easily eliminate the options. Alright, so please make a list of the species which are uh, critically endangered, endangered and vulnerable. And this is listed as uh, Schedule 1 species in the Indian Wildlife Protection Act. 1972. It is a schedule 1 species and as per the sites it is listed in the appendix 1 uh, sites uh, which is convention on international trade in endangered species. So as per sites it is listed under appendix 1. I hope you know about the appendices. There are three appendices and please go through that. The Chakrashila Wildlife Sanctuary and the Manas Wildlife Sanctuary in Assam are the two protected habitats for golden langur in India. Alright. And we will also talk about Central Zoo Authority. So, it is a national body which controls the functions of zoos in India. It controls the functions of zoo. And it is constituted under the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. Please do remember this point. It is constituted under the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. The main objective of this authority is to complement the 
national effort in conservation of the wildlife and it sets standards and norms for the housing, upkeep, healthcare and management of the animals in zoo. These are the major two functions of Zen Central Zoo Authority. So we move on to the next topic. It is about institutes of eminence. I hope you have heard about institutes of eminence. So UGC is not in agreement to the decision of granting tag to more institutions. This is why it was in news. UGC was not in agreement to the decision of granting tag to more institutions. So this institutes of eminence, it aims to help 20 higher education institutions from the country so that it break into top 500 global rankings in 10 years and then eventually into the top 100 list. Alright, so this is the aim of institutes of eminence. It will select 20 higher education institutes from the country and this Institute of Eminence, it was rolled out by University Grants Commission that is UGC and these selected institutions will have a greater autonomy compared with the other higher education institutions. Alright, it has got greater autonomy compared to other higher education institutions and they will be free to decide the, their fee for domestic and foreign students and have a flexible course duration and structure. Alright, so they will be free to decide on the fees. And the 10 governmental institutions selected will also get rupees 1000 crore each from the Ministry of Human Resource Development, MHRD, to achieve world class status. Alright, the 10 government institutions, they will receive a fund from the MHRD and there will be no financial assistance to the private institutions. There will be no financial institutions to the private institutions. And talking about the eligibility of this institutes of eminence, these are those institutes that found place among the top 50 in the National Institute Ranking Framework NIRF. All right. So these are institutes that found place among that is in the top 50 in the national institute ranking framework or those figuring in the top 500 in certain reputed international rating. All these two categories were eligible to apply for institutions of eminence. So that's about the topic and moving on to the next it is about national statistical commission. Why it was in news? Because two members of National Statistical Commission quit over differences with the government. They resigned due to the differences between the government and them. So the only two non-governmental members of India's National Statistical Commission have resigned and it is the apex advisory organization for all of the country's core statistical activities. National Statistical Commission is the apex advisory organization for all of the country's core statistical activities. Alright, so this National Statistical Commission, it was a government of India through a resolution dated on 1st June 2005. The government of India through a resolution which is dated on 1st June 2005 set up this National Statistical Commission. So it was set up through a resolution. It was based on the recommendations of Rangarajan Commission which reviewed the Indian statistical system in 2001 and based on this recommendation this body was formed and this is an autonomous body which was constituted with effect from 12th July 2006 with a mandate to evolve policies, priorities and standards in the statistical matters. So they will evolve policies and provide the standards in the statistical matters. Talking about the organization structure, so this body constitutes 
four members besides a chairperson each having specialization and experience in specified statistical fields it is a five member body that is chairman and four other members all right so we will move on to the next topic that is bla ndm1 so in a significant finding in the global spread of multi drug resistant bacteria the scientists have found a superbug gene which was first detected in new delhi over a decade back and now it is found in one of the last pristine places on earth that is in the arctic so they also found antibiotic resistance gene which way and it is found in the arctic soil and it says that they are likely to spread through the fecal matter of birds other wildlife and human visitors to the area this this might be the mode of transporting this might be the mode of transmission of this superbug gene all right so what is this bla ndm1 ndm1 it stands for new delhi metallo beta lactamase 1 okay it's not that really important so ndm1 it is a superbug and it is resistant to almost all antibiotics it is a superbug which is resistant to almost all antibiotics and this ndm1 protein product itself does not cause disease but it has the potential to change the characteristics of bacteria so this will change the character of bacteria and the gene makes bacteria resistant to antibiotics all right the gene makes the bacteria resistant to antibiotics so the studies shows that it can lead to a range of conditions such as urinary tract blood stream or wound infections and pneumonia okay all these infections can be happened and also pneumonia and this ndm1 gene allows the bacterium to produce an enzyme that neutralizes the activity of antibiotics okay that is the process which is what is happening this ndm1 gene that allow the bacterium to produce an enzyme which will neutralize the activity of the antibiotics so even if we take the antibiotics it will go futile right and the enzyme that makes bacteria drug resistant got new delhi in its name because it was first detected in a swedish patient of indian origin who traveled to india in 2008 hence the name this new delhi in its name and the bacteria that carry ndm1 gene are gram negative which is a different classification of bacteria there are gram positive and gram negative bacteria so these are a gram negative type of bacteria that's it and we move on to map aided program so today we will see the ports of tartus and latakia which is in syria so in the map you can see that towards the eastern end you can mark the you can spot the locations of latakia and tartus so syria and iran they signed a strategic economic agreement which is in relation to the infrastructure and it will provide rehabilitation of the ports of tartus and latakia in syria all right so it is based on a strategic economic agreement between syria and iran and iran will provide for the rehabilitation of the ports of tartus and tartus and latakia which is in syria so tartus it is a city on the mediterranean coast of syria and it is the second largest port city in syria and talking about the ports of latakia it is a sea port which is located on the mediterranean sea in the city of latakia and it was established in 1950 and it has since served as syria's main sea port so latakia is one of the major port of syria all right tartus and latakia it's a, it is the ports of syria that's it and moving on to pqrs that is previous year question revision series the question is the term m scripts is sometimes seen in news is related to a captive breeding of wild fauna b maintenance of tiger reserves c 
Indigenous Satellite Navigation System D. It is Security of National Highways These are the options What are M strips related to? It is a factual question So if you know the answer You can mark it Or otherwise you can leave So M strip it stands for Monitoring System for Tiger Intensive Protection and Ecological Status So even if you know at least this name, that what M strip stands for, you can easily come to the answer. M strip stands for monitoring systems for tiger intensive protection and ecological status. All right, and this was launched by National Tiger Conservation Authority, which is chaired by Minister of Environment, Forest, and Climate Change. Right. So this program, it was launched by National Tiger Conservation Authority, NTCA, and it is to strengthen the patrolling and surveillance of the endangered Bengal tiger. It is to strengthen the patrolling and surveillance of the endangered Bengal tiger. And this system, it consists of uh, two components. So first one is a field-based protocol for patrolling law enforcement then uh, recording the wildlife crimes, ecological monitoring, all these are done by the first component and second component which is a customized software for the storage, uh, retrieval, analysis and for the reporting process, okay. So there are two components and this android based software it will be used across all the national tiger reserves of the country. So the answer for the question is B that is for the maintenance of tiger reserves, M strips are used. Okay, I hope you are clear. And so today I will ask you an MCQ that is consider the species. First one is Malabar civet, two lion tail macaque, three golden langur, four dugong, and five it is great Indian bustard. So out of these five species, which of them are endemic to India? A, it is 1, 2, 3 and 4. B, 2, 4 and 5. C, 1 and 2 only. D, it is 1, 3, 5, 1, 2, 3 and 5 only. These are the options and please do answer this question and you can answer it in the comment section below. And before winding up, Yesterday's question's answer is B, that is 1 and 3 only. Okay, so with this we wind up today's session and you can refer the current affairs material from the description below. Thank you for watching.